Mate, this is a good angle. This is nice. Good lighting. Good vibe. We've also got bokeh in the background. Bokeh in the background as well. Oh, hey guys. Welcome back to the vlog. This is going to be a fun day. I give some more context. Should I give some more context? <laughs> hey friends, and welcome back to another episode of the vlog. We start off by grabbing a cheeky breakfast with our pal Stephen Bartlett in the morning, and then we head over to the conference venue. For context, we're here in Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates, and I'm here to attend and to give a keynote speech at the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Festival. Indeed, yeah. It's quite cold as well inside. That noise earlier, yeah, I was like, oh, hello, did I break something? Me, yeah. Concerned, but it's it's okay. <laughs> I feel like this feels so professional. My goodness. Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure someone will kick us out at some point, but or maybe not. Who knows? Is is it on? Is it recording? Not yet. Can I just go? And why does productivity matter? Yeah, so I think productivity is just using your time intentionally and effectively. And when you are trying to be an entrepreneur, let's say you're starting out in your journey, you're probably, you probably have some kind of day job, like whether you're a student and you have your days filled with stuff or whether you have a job and you have your days filled with stuff and you're doing the entrepreneurship thing on the side. Most people getting into entrepreneurship don't have the trust fund to just be able to explore and do whatever they want for 10 years, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so that means that to really get your thing off the ground, you need to be able to do it in small amounts of time in the weekends and in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes even during the day job, which is something that I used to do when I was a doctor and a student. You know, we I can go into that. that. Nice. <laughs> That's how you do it. But if you want to do that, then you just need to be really good at managing your time and really good at, you know, if you decide that, okay, I'm going to spend two hours this evening working on my website or working on my product, that you A, actually spend two hours that evening working on your product and B, that the time you spend working on that product is as efficient as it can be because you don't have all day to work on the thing. And so I think it's, it's particularly important at the start of the journey, but then even if you go full time into the entre entrepreneurship stuff, in a way that becomes even more important because as the company scales up, as the, as, as the founder, as the leader of, of the company, as, as you'll know, you have like infinite demands on your time. And I used to, I used to think, oh man, once I, once I leave my full time job as a doctor, suddenly it'll be so easy making YouTube videos. But then the business evolved and now I work more hours than I used to even when I was working as a doctor. And you get even more demands on your time. And so therefore, finding ways to optimize that and be efficient and be effective is just super important at every stage of the journey. After the podcast, we get to hang out with the attendees of the conference. Honestly, this is one of my favorite bits about doing this kind of thing. Meeting subscribers, hearing about their journeys, answering questions, and generally giving both solicited and unsolicited advice. Lots of them. Hey guys, <laughs> look who I just met, man. It's Ali, oh my God. I really can't believe, man. Yeah, small world, man. Yeah, you've had like a great impact on me. Oh, thank you. Yeah, That's very kind. You just like help me a lot. Think outside the box. Yeah, nice. Yeah. But maybe I'll become an entrepreneur or something after four years in the field. Yeah, it's a thing. It just depends how much. How much do you actually care about stability? Like, if you were, if you're from a family where like your, your parents are broke and you have to support a family, then stability is really important. Mm -hmm. If your parents have enough money that you like, it's, they can afford to send you to international school, then yeah. generally people can take risks and now you can go for like a entrepreneurial path. So it just depends on the life circumstances. We no way. Now, so oh, <laughs> small world. Hi, Ali. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's do it. Thank you. Nice. Thank no you worries. Very much. Have a good day. See you around. One yeah. productivity tip that you always give to anyone. One productivity tip. Honestly, I think focus on enjoying the journey. If you enjoy the journey, you don't need productivity tips. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. That's a good pick. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, good to see you guys. What is the secret of succeed on YouTube? Oh, consistency. It's boring. Everyone says that. This is true. Consistency. Yeah, but I've been doing it for six years now, so it's just like, yeah. Every week for six years. If you, if you do something every week for six years, you become good at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that no one does it for six years, so like, it's really, like, it's really hard to make 6K a month from YouTube. 0.00001% of people will ever make 6k a month from YouTube. That's like ridiculous levels of success. Yeah. Okay. So there's because there's two there's there's two types of businesses. Like it, we I, I think we have to be clear on like what's what's the goal right now. If the goal is I need to make enough money to quit my job, then we really think like how much money does that actually need to be? Like does it really need to be 6k a month? 
Could it be 4K a month? Could it be 5K a month? Could it be 2K a month? Could it be 2K a month and I dip into savings? Um, so the smaller that number is, the easier it is to quit the job. But people will shackle themselves into golden handcuffs of Dubai life thinking, oh, I have to make six figures a year because otherwise I can't go to the fancy restaurant. Like, fuck the fancy restaurant. Who cares? Like, <laughs> you know, what is that, what is that number? How, how small can we make it? The other thing to keep in mind is that, like, you're never going to get there with a YouTube channel. It's, like, not going to happen unless you can literally make videos every single week for two years. That's really hard to do with a full-time job. It's basically, it's, it's not going to happen. But where you can get there is by doing a business that doesn't rely on you having to ramp up slowly. It's like if you're building a YouTube channel, you're in the red for three years before you make any money. You probably don't want to do that. You don't want to be in the red for three years while soul-sucking corporate job while struggling with consistency. You want to make money from day one. How do you make money from day one? You make money from day one by offering a service to a business that can pay for the service. You guys have backgrounds as well. You've got a background in financial accounting like this. There are ways to monetize that kind of service and make 1,000 a month from each client, 2,000 a month from each client. We have people who've left our team to become freelancers who are making 10K a month just by finding a handful of clients and working with them. And now they're making 10K a month, they've quit their job, they're happy, and now they can do the YouTube ramp up for three years. At this point, it's approaching 5 p.m. and it's time to get ready for my talk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you recording? Do you know how to work it? I think I know how to work okay. it. Yeah. I'm micing, I'm micing me up for the talk. Thank you very much. And that talk is happening in about five minutes. We'll see how it goes. How are you guys feeling? I, I'm, I'm okay. Very relaxed. Very relaxed, yeah. Having a good time. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it'll go all right. Hopefully we'll stick to time and yeah, hope for the best. The impact stage. I have a question. What do a YouTuber, an ex-doctor, a podcaster, and a budding author have in common? They just might be the same person. Our next speaker talks to us about why it's never a good idea to shun your passions and how you can improve your craft. He is the co-host of weekly podcast, Not Overthinking, and also runs the part-time YouTuber Academy. Please help me in welcoming Ali Abdal. Hello everyone, how are we doing? Let's start with part one, my journey into entrepreneurship. Right now, you know, I do this, thank you for the very kind introduction. I used to be a doctor, and then I disappointed my mum when I became a YouTuber, and now I've been doing YouTube for six years. The channel's now on like three point something million subscribers, and we've got a whole team, and it's just become this ridiculously big thing that I could have never imagined, and now I get invited to cool places like this to give talks exactly like this one. But it all kind of started um, you know, I deploy my mother. All kind of started when I was 18 and I started medical school at Cambridge University. And, you know, this was great. Got all the grades, did the whole thing. And I was, at, I was there at the age of 18 with my little glasses, with my little smile, being like, yes, life is going to be good. I am going to be a doctor. But there were a couple of insights or observations that I had in my journey through medical school that really set me on the path to entrepreneurship. Um, the first one was that every doctor I spoke to either looked like this, or like this, or like this. Stock images for tired and stressed doctors. They were all super tired, they were all super stressed. They didn't really seem to be particularly enjoying their lives. And so one question that I started asking people, just kind of randomly, was, if you won the lottery, would you still do medicine for fun? And obviously this applies to medicine, but you can apply this to any, any career that you might be in. I've just been speaking right now to people in the corporate world, this kind of stuff. If you look at the people who are five years, 10 years ahead of you, how much are they enjoying their life? If it's medicine in the UK, the answer is broadly not very much. So I would ask, I would ask every doctor that I met that I got to know a reasonable amount this question. If you won the lottery, would you still do medicine for fun? And essentially, I would get a 50-50 split. Half of the people would say, I would leave immediately. One guy even said, I would leave in the middle of the operation if I won the lottery. <laughs> he wanted to be a football coach. He was like a professional obstetrician. I've been working for 40 years. Anyway, all that aside, <laughs> um, half of them would say I would leave immediately. And the other half would say, I would still do medicine, but I would go part-time. I don't know anyone who enjoys being a full-time doctor, working 80 hours a week, 
But I know a bunch of people who would enjoy it if they had to just work two or three days a week. And most of us here, if you have a real job and you enjoy the, enjoy the job, it's pretty cool if you can just do it two, two or three days a week. It's sick. You can spend time with your family. You can do your hobbies. You can do your side hustle, whatever that looks like. Working part time is actually a good path to a fulfilling life. But then I would follow up with, OK, well, what's stopping you from quitting? Or what's stopping you from going part time? And it would always be about money. They would have like a mortgage or a family or kids in private school and any of this kind of stuff. And, it would be, and they'd be like, well, I'm now shackled to this job because I need it to pay the bills. And I can't quit my job or go part time because I need the money. I was like, all right, cool. Fair enough. And this basically made me realize that if I wanted to enjoy my life as a doctor, I would probably have to go part time. And I'd probably need a way to generate income on the side. Uh, and since then, I've met loads of doctors who have income on the side and who work part time in medicine. And they're loving their lives. Life is good. How do you make money without actually working for it? <laughs> this is what everyone wants. This is what we all want, right? Like We want to make money without having to work for it. Realistically, there's actually no such thing as passive income, and you do have to work for it. But it was an idea. And so this, this idea lit the fire of entrepreneurship underneath me. And I realized that, A, if I want to enjoy my life as a doctor, I probably would want to go part time if my colleagues are anything to go by. B, if I want to go part time, I need to somehow make money on the side. And C, ideally, this money needs to be passive so that I'm not working ridiculously hard and burning myself out to make that money. And those things led me to this whole journey of entrepreneurship, which is broadly the journey of how to make money, which is broadly the journey of like how do you service people in a way that they will gladly pay money for. And you know, it's broadly three ways of doing it that I'm just going to blitz through. Number one is services. You could sell a service that people are going to pay for. Number two is products. You could create a product, a digital product, a physical product, whatever that might be, that people will pay for. And number three is attention. And this is sort of what YouTubers and influencers are doing. You're kind of selling attention, um, whether you're selling your own services or your own products or someone else's services or products or a sponsorship, anything like that. By building an audience of people that know, like, and trust you, um, you can supercharge your ability to make money and your ability to be an entrepreneur by being able to sell these different types of things, services and products. The whole, how do you make money through services? How do you make money through products? How do you make money through attention? But it's not. I think what's potentially more interesting is a question that I've gotten most often than out of anything else, which is a question that loads of people even asked me while I was outside earlier today, which is that how do you do all of this stuff? Like, let's say you've got a full-time job, and you know you want to start a business on the side. Let's say you're a full-time student, and you know you want to start a YouTube channel, or write a book, or do something in the evenings. How do you actually do that? while you have most of your day that is taken up with your main gig, your student or your full-time job or whatever. And the thing that everyone says is that the secret to all of this is consistency. How do you create a service that's compelling enough for people to pay for? Well, you show up consistently and you provide value. How do you create a product that people will pay for? You show up consistently, you provide value. How do you build an audience on the internet like YouTube or Instagram or TikTok? You show up consistently day after day, week after week. You provide value for free in the hope that some point further down the line, people will start to follow you. But this consistency thing is actually kind of hard, especially while you have this full-time job. And so for the second part of this, I want to kind of focus on how I personally stay infinitely productive and consistent as a creator and entrepreneur. After the talk, it's time for some more hangouts, a couple more interviews, and then we meet up with a new friend, Raj, who takes us to what's apparently the best Pakistani restaurant in town. Great. What's this? Do you, want, do you want to shoot anything before you eat? It's up to you. I mean, I'm yeah, Gordon is. Oh no, no, not at all. Like Gordon is doing the doing the whole oh, whole yeah. shebang. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me. Huh? Yeah. I'm not here. All right. <laughs> Try it out. I'll just have some. Yeah, happy enough. I haven't tried this before. Oh, is it nice? That's good. Hey, both actually. <laughs> no, no, look at this. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Here we go. All right. Ready for this? Yep. Go ahead. This is, uh, this is Ali's first bite. Of first bite of the laptop. Let's go. Oh, that's really good. How is it so good? 
If I knew I'd be selling it myself. This is so nice. How do they do it? Hello, vlog. Welcome back. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, it is currently 2.20 a.m. I have just arrived back in the hotel in Sharjah. Today's been absolutely sick. Um, this is gonna be my little monologue segment at the end of the vlogs. So I'm just gonna share some reflections from the conference and then I'm gonna end with one thing I'm reading in terms of fiction and nonfiction, uh, one thing I've learned this week and one thing that I've been thinking about this week, pondering for the week ahead. So reflections on the conference. It's just been basically been super fun. Um, very, very short trip to Sharjah, but the conference today was sick. I'm sad that we couldn't have stayed, for, stayed until tomorrow. I kind of booked some weird flights, and so when we're gonna be missing Steve Bartlett's speech, and there's a bunch of other cool stuff happening tomorrow, but hey, gotta get back to London to focus on book stuff, because it's now for full crunch time for the book, and we've got another like 11 days to basically finish the second draft and hand it, hand it to the editors. 12, 13 days, something like that. But Christmas day counts as a day, so yeah. What's going on? Um, conference was sick. Love meeting people in real life. It's just great. Um, hung out with Mo Gaudat a little bit, uh, my, my mate from the pod, and he's cool. Um, just full of, full of joy and just great vibes. And yeah, interviewed various times for various different media outlet type things here um, around productivity. And kind of the more I talk about this whole, like the concepts of the, of the book, the more comfortable I get kind of articulate, articulating the ideas and kind of being, almost being sold on the ideas in the book. Because it's all, it's one thing to just write stuff and put it on a screen and send it to an editor. It's another to actually put those ideas out in the world and talk about these ideas with other people and kind of seeing how they're responding to things. And this has been, been super cool. But yeah, super glad that they invited me out here. Um, I really enjoyed doing this like speaking thing. So if you're watching this and you happen to be organizing a conference or happen to know someone organizing a conference, then drop me an email, ali at aliabdal.com or speaking I anything, anything works. Um, and it would be, yeah, it's just, it's just cool. I just love, I just love meeting people IRL. Anyway, um, this evening's been super fun. Uh, grabbed dinner with uh, Raj, Raj and Neil. They very kindly took me and Gordon out to this cool Pakistani restaurant. Um, and then afterwards I met up with Sheen, uh, who you guys might know from a previous season of my life. <laughs> uh, met up with Sheen, who lives in Dubai and has just started working for this other YouTuber influencer guy. So that's, that's pretty cool. And we, so we caught up about like, the struggles in our respective businesses and kind of what's been going right and what's been going wrong. And it's amazing how many parallels there are between the business that we have and the business that Khalid, uh, the influencer of the YouTuber, like whatever you call him, public figure that Sheen's working with have. Because it's all the same kind of stuff. It's the same sort of business model of content and being sponsored with brand deals and making courses and stuff. And it's just really, really interesting to get, a, get the behind the scenes and to exchange notes on what's been working and what's been not working and all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, back at the hotel now, probably gonna sleep. Just a few quick things that I wanna share for the week. So one thing that I've been reading in terms of fiction, I have been continuing to read Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, the fourth book of the Stormlight Archive. I need to read The Lost Metal. The Lost Metal, which is book seven of the, Cos of the Mistborn series is now out, but I haven't yet even started reading it because I wanna finish Rhythm of War, which is book four of Stormlight. And then I wanna reread books four, five, and six of the Wax and Wayne trilogy of the Mistborn second era before reading Lost Metal, although I might, end up have to, having to accelerate the Lost Metal. We'll see. Anyways, incredible fantasy fiction. I was up until like 5 a.m. last night here when we landed, just reading because I was just so engrossed into what was happening in Rhythm of War, even though it was my second time reading the book. And in terms of nonfiction, one book that I've been reading is Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond, I think. I'm trying to get more into history, trying to get more into understanding the way the world works and how things have been shaped and stuff. And that's been a very highly recommended book. And yeah, so I'm listening to it on Audible. And it's been pretty good so far. I'm only like a couple of chapters into it, but already I'm feeling like, yeah, this would, this would be a super interesting book to actually understand world history. Um, one thing I've learned this week is the importance of having space to think. I think with a, with a pretty packed calendar, it's too easy to go from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing. But actually, like yesterday morning, we managed to have breakfast. Me and Angus, my general manager, managed to have breakfast with Eric Partaker, who is my CEO coach. And actually just having two unstructured hours over breakfast just to talk about the business and how things are going in our business and our lives. It was just super handy in terms of getting clarity on 
what's gone well, what hasn't, what, <laughs> what, <coughs> what some of the challenges are, what we, what we need to do next in terms of planning for next year. And so I basically, I really wanna free up more time in my calendar to just have time and space to think about stuff. And then one thing I've been thinking about a lot this week uh, is how can I approach my work and other things in my life with more of a sense of lightness and ease and playfulness? How can I approach throwing things with a spirit of play? How can I treat them in a more playful attitude? Because I do often find that, again, when things are just busy one after the other after the other in the calendar and there's like lots going on, it's, it's too easy to just stop taking things too seriously and stop being like kind of in frantic stressed mode, just being like, oh, one thing to another. But actually, this is just, you know, life, as Alan Watts would say, is a symphony. Uh, the objective is not to get to the end. The objective is to enjoy the, enjoy the music. And so I often forget to approach things in a, with a playful attitude and with lightness, lightness and playfulness and ease. And I just want to get more of that in my life. So I need to find ways to remind myself that this is the, in, this is the energy that I want to show up in the world with lightness, playfulness, and ease. Um, and then one final question for you guys, if you're, if you're still watching here, firstly, thank you so much for watching, but I'd love for you to leave in a comment down below. What is, what is one way in which you remind yourself to approach what you're doing with lightness, playfulness, and ease? Any strategies you find useful for this, anything you found helpful, I would love to learn from you. It would be really nice to see in the comments what people say to this. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching. This is a playlist of more day in the life blogs. Uh, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.